Hello, everybody, and welcome to our introduction to introductions. So today I'm going to be walking you through how to write your catcher essay introduction. Of course, you can be more creative than the suggestions that I'm going to give you, but this will give you a basic framework to work from, and then you can add your own style as you go. Holden is maybe not the first sad boy that ever showed up in literature, but he's definitely like a most talked about sad boy. He's the most iconic. And you at this point are going to decide whether you're going to talk about his loss of childhood that he's grieving or the loss of his actual brother, but we'll get into that. How do you prove that Holden is grieving? Remember that you have somebody standing next to you saying, I don't think Holden's grieving anything. And your job is to prove that person wrong. A good essay introduction is where we get started with that. And there are three parts to a good introduction. You're going to ease your reader into the topic. You're going to directly reference the source material you'll be using. And you're going to end with a thesis and a thesis map. And I'm going to kind of break those down for you so you understand what those parts look like. So easing your reader into the topic. As you get started, a lot of people are kind of wanting to just like jump right into the paper. So their first sentence is going to be like, catcher in the rye, Holden Caulfield definitely is grieving, da, da, da. That's too much. That's too soon. Your reader needs to have a general understanding of what you're talking about before you actually reference all of that stuff. So give them a chance to orient themselves to the type of essay you're going to be writing before you just throw all the main information at them. How do you do that? Well, identifying your general topic is the easiest way to start. That's super easy for this essay because we all have the same general topic and it's grief. We're talking about grief. Whether this grief process is him grieving the fact that he's no longer a child and he has to grow up, or he's grieving the fact that his little brother died and he hasn't gotten closure with that yet, you get to choose that. But the idea here is we're gonna be talking about grief one way or the other. Now, how do you ease them into that? There are a few ways, but I gave a few examples here where you could describe what grief is. You could say how different people may experience it differently, or you could like get really creative and describe a scene in a few sentences that clearly involves somebody grieving to kind of like make my mind focus on the concept of grief. Any of those will work. Then you want to directly reference your source material. For that, super easy. What we're talking about is catcher. You want to add the author's name so that you look credible because you know who the author is. And you want to you know, cite the title of the book and make sure that you write it correctly. It's the catcher and the rye. Otherwise, you kind of don't look like you know what you're talking about. Now, when you do it, I do want you to connect the topic to the source. So in your like, here's what my source material is, you do want to reference grief so that it seems like it fits in the same paragraph. So make that definitive statement about Holden and his grief. I want you to directly say like Holden is in fact grieving. And you can even say what he's grieving. It can start off as simply as the, in The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, Holden Caulfield, and then fill in the blank, you know. But make sure you can see that I hit both. I hit the book, I hit the author, and I'm actually talking about the character that I'll be focusing on. So all of those things need to show up in your introduction. This is one way in which you can include them. And then you want to end with a thesis and a thesis map. A thesis really just tells your reader, this is the argument that I'll be proving in this paper without like referencing yourself or the paper because that's yucky writing. So we'll work on how to do that without, you know, referencing yourself. But make sure to list the smaller arguments. That's what our thesis map is. And I'll kind of break that down. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said that sometimes a scream is better than a thesis. This is not one of those cases. Please stop screaming at your computer. What is the difference between a thesis and a thesis map, you ask? Well, a thesis map is the overall argument that you're making. So yes, Holden's grieving. He's grieving this. That's your thesis. Once you say what Holden is grieving, you've gotten through the actual thesis. A good thesis should be what your reader remembers the most. So if somebody reads your paper and then tries to describe it to somebody else, they're going to say like, oh, so-and-so is arguing that Holden is grieving the loss of his brother because da 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 and if you write a really good thesis, they'll remember your reasons as well. A thesis map is your reasons. So every point you'll need to make to prove that overall argument is your thesis map. And you want to list them early on in the introduction so your reader has like an organizational system so that they know how to take in the information better and can better receive the information that you're about to give them. How many points you plan on making is important because they all need to show up there and they need to show up in the order that you plan on making them in your paper. So make sure that you're going back to your thesis later and revising it if you change the order of your essay. How do you do this? Well, 
you got to list the ways in which Holden shows his grief. Now, we talked about organizational methods. You could do it chronologically. You could list the major actions that he does and then analyze those with the stages of grief. Or you could go over the stages of grief that he exhibits the most and give examples of times when he's exhibiting them. Either way, you want to list them, again, in the order that you're going to write about them and save the acceptance stage for later. So you're gonna have another sentence after you go over those main stages of grief or those main actions where you say whether or not you think that Holden reaches the acceptance phase. And you're also gonna say like the reason why. So you have to have that because phrase. Either Holden has reached the acceptance phase because he does this, or he hasn't reached the acceptance phase because he does or does not do this. Don't forget to revisit that thesis once your essay is finished. An essay is really never finished until it's published. And even after things get published, sometimes we make new additions when we need to fix them. So never think of something as like completely finished. It can still be fixed. It can still be improved. And as you get through your essay, you may change your organization. You may change one of the points that you make. Make sure that that's still reflected in your thesis because that's where your reader starts and that's how your reader is going to organize all this information. That's important. That's all you really need to know to get through your introduction essay. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. But your next step is to go to your Catcher essay doc that I posted at Google Classroom and write an introduction. Have a great day. Wash your hands. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you again tomorrow.